Welcome to Life According to Scripture, where the Word of God is alive, anointed, and geared toward developing, improving, and strengthening your relationship with the Lord. Our teachings aim to spiritually nurture both new believers and strengthen those who are already mature in their faith. We're grateful to have you join us in the study of the Word of God today. We pray that it penetrates your heart deeply, bringing you even closer to the Lord. Greetings, radio audience. In the name of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, once again, this is Minister Caroline Gothia coming to you live from Oasis of Faith Christian Center in Hesperia, California in the United States. Today, we're going to be talking about whether or not we can trust God. For those that have received Jesus as their Savior and Lord, confessing with your mouth according to Romans 10, 9, and 10 that Jesus is the Christ and you want him to be Lord of your life. Now we grow on to things beyond just receiving Jesus. Now we grow and we go from glory to glory according to scripture. Now we're learning how we're to implement the word of God into our life. Amen. Jan, uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. In other words, you might read it like this, I have good thoughts toward you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. You know how many people in this world are hopeless? The Lord is saying for the believer, he's your hope. Why should you believe this? Why should you grab hold of this scripture and never let it go? Because as you study the word of God, you'll find the scripture teaches us that God is not a man that he should lie. Scripture teaches us, it says, if God spoke it, it says, will he not bring it to pass? You'll begin to, to, to see the different character traits of God as you study his word. One of them, according to Revelation 19, 11, is faithful, faithfulness. In fact, the very name that scripture gives Jesus in that passage is faithful and true. In other words, he's faithful, he's loyal, he's true to his word. So because he's faithful and true to his word, we can trust what he says when he says, for I know the thoughts I have toward you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you the expected end in your life that I promised you. Now, if someone promises you something and they're not one for keeping their word, you're not going to put much trust there. But when you study the word of God, beloved, you will find he's not a man that he should lie. When he says something, he keeps his word. How do you begin to know him, to know his character? Because you will only trust someone if you know something about them, if you know their character, if you know they can be trusted. How do we do that? How do you do that with God? We start learning what pleases him and what displeases him. There are consequences for both. You don't want the bad consequences. You want the good consequences. The Passion Translation of the Bible reads in Proverbs 6, 16 through 19, reads like this. Let's see what God hates and make sure we stay clear of what he hates. See, as a believer, as a born-again son or daughter of God, you want to be like your father. You want to love what he loves. You want to hate what he hates. He doesn't hate people. He hates Satan. He hates evil. He hates sin. See, you, not people. Hallelujah. It reads, there are six evils that God truly hates. And then it says, and a seventh, that is an abomination to him. That means he doesn't just hate it, but he hates it with a passion. Putting others down is while considering yourself superior is one of those things that scripture says he hates. Have you seen, any, you ever meet anybody like that? I have. Considering yourself superior while you're putting others down. 
spreading lies and rumors, saying things about people simply because you don't like them or repeating something that you've heard and you don't know whether it's true or not. So why would you be repeating it? He, this is saying that this is one of the things that he hates. Now, when we learn the things that he hates, remember, we're getting to know him. We're getting to, be, to a place where we can trust him. So as we learn what he hates, we develop a hatred for it. As we learn what he loves, we begin to develop a love for it. This is how you get to know a person. Hallelujah. Spilling of innocent blood. <clears throat> this one, beloved, is big because abortion is so big, uh, in particular in our country, and I'm probably in other countries as well, but you can't get more innocent than the blood of a baby. You can't get more innocent than that. So he's saying he hates the shedding of innocent blood. He hates plotting evil in your heart towards others. Have you ever known people that just sit around thinking up evil, thinking up things, thinking up how they can get back at somebody? This is plotting evil. And this is one of the things that God says he hates. Gloating over what's plainly wrong. When you know something is wrong, especially as a believer, when we know it's wrong, according to the word of God, you can't support that. You can't be in agreement with that. What you, you know that it's wrong. They may not know it's wrong. A sinner may not know. But you as a believer, one that studies the word of God, you know that it's wrong. Sprouting lies in false testimony. Stirring up strife between friends. How many times do we see this? You know, people just spreading things and stirring up strife. And you see friendships, relationships, family relationships uh, devoured you know, just, just, just for something that someone has said, and it wasn't even true, stirring up strife. Since these things are despicable to God, that's what scripture says in Proverbs, since these things are despicable to God, they should be despicable to us as well. And we, beloved, as we learn about God, learn about the character of God, learn that we can trust God, we should stay clear of these things and anybody that participates in these things. Hallelujah. Remember, getting to know God's character helps us to be able to trust his word and to have faith in whatever he says in his word. If you don't trust a person, you're not going to trust their word. Hallelujah. We've seen what God hates. Let's see some of what he loves. Now, this isn't everything, but we're going to take a look at some things. We see what he hates. Now we're going to look at what he loves. Look at John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. When it says world, it's talking about people. So for God so loved people that he gave his only begotten son, that we could live with him in eternity and not have to spend eternity in hell. That's love. Scripture teaches in another passage that he wants none to perish. Why not? Because he loves them. He loves the sinner. He just doesn't love the sin. In Ephesians, it says, even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's love, beloved. We, weren't, we, didn't even, we didn't even love him. We hadn't even received him as, as our Savior and Lord. And if, if, you, if you're like me, I didn't even want to hear anything about him. And scripture says, even while we were yet sinners, he died for us. That's love, beloved. He didn't wait for us to choose him, but he chose us. 1 Peter 2.9 teaches us, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's love. He's telling you that you're chosen. He's telling you that you're special to him. He's telling you how he's called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We would never have seen the light had it not been for the love of God. Hallelujah. We see in Ephesians 2.10, 
in the Passion Translation, <clears throat> we have become his poetry, is how this one reads it. We have become his poetry. You know, poetry can be beautiful, beautiful poems. We have become his poetry to a, a, a recreated people that, that will fulfill the destiny he has given each of us. For we are joined to Jesus, the Anointed One. Let's read that again. It's Ephesians 2.10. We have become his poetry, a recreated people that will fulfill the destiny he has given each of us. For we are joined to Jesus. Who is Jesus? The anointed one. Even before we were born, God planned in advance our destiny. Th this is love, beloved. Even parents that say they love their children, they don't do this kind of planning. Hallelujah. It says, even before we were born, God planned in advance our destiny. He planned in advance our purpose and the good works we would do to fulfill that purpose and destiny. Hallelujah. There is so much more to the character of God that shows us his love. It shows us his kindness. It shows us he's forgiveness. It shows us he's our father. These are the same things that you say when you worship him. We worship him because of who he is. His character is who he is. We worship him because he's kind. We worship him because he's forgiver. We worship him because he's awesome. We worship him because he's savior. We worship him. We honor him. We glorify him for who he is. Not what he did, who he is. Hallelujah. So someone with these characteristics, I would think, could be called trustworthy, faithful. Scripture says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That says he's not like people. People will be one way with you one day, and the next time you see them, they act like they don't, they don't even know you. See, he's not like people. He, he doesn't get into a bad mood. He says regarding his promises, if I spoke it, if, in other words, if I said this thing to you, if I spoke this promise, shall I not bring it to pass? His word says, I will not alter the words that come out of my mouth. You know, human beings, we alter the things that come out of our mouths all the time. You, if, if two people saw an accident, you'll see how it's altered depending on which one you're talking to. They won't be able to give you the same story. They alter it, and then they may come back and tell you they saw it differently. They made a mistake, and so forth. These things happen. People change. People change. God never changes. Hallelujah. This sounds to me, beloved, like someone you could never put your trust in, one that's changing, changing all the time. But then you get someone like thick God with this kind of character that never changes. Hallelujah. That sounds to me like someone you can put your trust in, like someone you could put your life on the line for. Luke 4.1 encourages us strongly to live by every word that comes out of the mouth of God, every word that comes out of the word of God. With the, with the character traits we've been discussing here today, it would be easy to trust someone that never breaks their word. Very easy. So when you have a dream or a vision in your heart, it's God that has put good dreams and visions in your heart. If you place them in your heart, you can trust him to bring them to pass. Why? Because of the character traits of God we just listed. God placed a dream in Joseph's heart that, that ultimately ended up saving his family. What dream has he placed in your heart, beloved? Whatever it is, he's faithful to see it to fruition. Hallelujah. That's the character of God. Now that's all the time we have for today, beloved. You can reach us in the United States at Oasis of Faith Christian Center, 17520 Lemon Street, Hesperia, California, 92345. In the United States, you can also reach us at lifescripture at gmail.com. Now until we come into your home again next week, I pray the blessing of God over your life and over your family. 
I thank you that you will take this word deep into your spirit and into your heart, that you will study it and meditate on it. And may God give thee increase.